Compared to most logic boards, this model has a large number of screws and cowlings. Take your time and organize them in a way that assists you later. Starting from the top corner, let's work clockwise around the logic board to remove cowlings and disconnect 17 cables. Most of the connector types on this model are either solid platform or locking lever. Use a Torx T3 screwdriver to remove three T3 screws to reveal the first solid platform connectors. Then use tweezers to remove the L-shaped cowling. Although they vary by size, solid platform connectors are disconnected the same way. Use the flat end of a black stick to disconnect the touch bar touch, the touch bar display, and the left I.O. flex cable. Keep the bend in the I.O. flex cable at 90 degrees or less. Because it has adhesive, peel up the touch bar touch flex cable just enough to clear the board's top edge. Now, onto the left speaker cable. This is our first locking lever connector. Use tweezers or your fingers to lift the Mylar tab. Then, use the pointed end of a black stick to raise the locking lever and disconnect the left speaker cable. We'll use this method for every locking lever connector. Follow the same steps to disconnect the keyboard backlight power cable and the wide keyboard flex cable. Then, remove the two T5 screws and the cowling from the trackpad connector. Use the flat end of a black stick to disconnect the solid platform trackpad cable. Now, remove the battery cover to thread the trackpad flex cable through the slot. Reattach the battery cover. Use a black stick to raise the locking lever and disconnect the right speaker cable and the fan cable. Looking at the whole board, we can see there are just a few more connectors to go. Nice job. Now, use a Torx T5 screwdriver to remove the two T5 screws and cowling from the audio cable. We'll share important reinstallation tips later. Disconnect the solid platform audio cable. At the top edge of the board, disconnect the locking lever for the right keyboard backlight cable. This is the second of three keyboard backlight cables. Remove the four T3 screws and two cowlings from the EDP flex cable. Then disconnect the solid platform EDP connector. Disconnect the left and final locking lever keyboard backlight connector. Remove the mylar pad over the antenna connectors. Use tweezers to remove any remaining adhesive. Grasp the head of the antenna connector, pinch the antenna tool arms, then pull the tool straight up. Disconnect both antenna cables. Finally, release the locking lever microphone flex cable. Nice work with the cables. Now we're ready to remove the logic board screws. Start with the T5 antenna ground screw. Remove it. Then remove the T5 shoulder screw from the upper right corner of the logic board. And the three identical T5 screws near the bottom edge of the board. At the end of the heatsink arm, remove the two T3 screws and the audio board cowling. Then use a 3mm hex nut driver to remove the hex screw from the top corner of the heatsink. The heatsink stays attached to the logic board as you remove it. To avoid damage, hold the edges of the logic board, not the heatsink. Treat the heatsink with caution to preserve its shape and protect the fragile fins. Move cables aside as you tilt up the lower edge of the logic board. Then slide the board toward the trackpad to clear the wireless antenna cables. Remove the logic board from the top case. Excellent! That's a lot of steps and now we're ready to move on to reassembly. If you're installing a replacement logic board, be sure to transfer the EDP flex cable to the replacement logic board. Also, a replacement logic board requires a replacement Touch ID board. Refer to the service guide for details.
Inspect the top case to make sure all screw standoffs are present. Cables can be in the way when reinstalling the logic board. Using non-conductive Kapton tape is optional as long as the cables are not strained and the tape is removed after. When tilting the logic board into the top case, take your time. You've got this. Hold the edges of the board while using a black stick to clear all cables including the battery flex cable. Before reinstalling screws, count all 17 cables to make sure they are near their connectors and not caught under the board. Include the battery connector in that total count. Then, looking directly over the board, adjust it so the screw holes align. Install the four T5 logic board screws and the hex screw at the end of the heatsink. For the hex screw, start reinstalling it with tweezers for the first turn. Then, finish with the hex driver. Next, install the audio board cowling and two T3 screws. The longer screw is at the bottom. Install the T5 antenna ground screw. Use tweezers to align the two wireless antenna cables over the receptacles. Connect them using the antenna tool. Remove the paper backing and adhere a new mylar cover over the antenna ground screw. Connect the remaining cables and reinstall cowlings and screws.